after the men hit the ground, vehicles, artillery, and ammunition were sent floating groundward. Units and equipment dropped exactly where they were supposed to be dropped were quickly assembled and put into action. Hurdling the ocean and another year, we arrive in Dublin, 1960. Irish troops bound for the Congo prepare for a 5,000-mile journey to a strange country torn by civil war. trip from Dublin to Tripoli to Leopoldville. The troops get a chance to stretch their legs. And the pipers get a chance to stretch their lungs. support of the United Nations mission in the Congo, delivered troops and supplies from Sweden, Ghana, India, Canada, Malaya, Indonesia, Nigeria, Argentina, Ethiopia, Pakistan, Denmark, and 11 other countries. Some of the round trips totaled 23,000 miles, and the average trip was 12,000 miles, the longest airlift in history, both in distance and in duration. violence and disorder which had plagued the cities and villages of the Congo was brought under control by the United Nations police force. The Congo airlift is still going on. The time at the East Staff Control Center is again the present. The first jet strato lifters have arrived at Dum Dum Airport, Calcutta, India. The infantry weapons are immediately unloaded and rushed to the volunteer soldiers. The balanced scales of war were tipped in favor of the Indian people. Judy Rollins has arrived at Andrews Air Force Base near Washington, D.C after a comfortable eight-hour aerial journey. Ten hours have elapsed from the time she left an army hospital room in Frankfurt, Germany, until the time she arrived in another army hospital room in Washington, D.C. With the help of the heart specialist at Walter Reed Army Hospital, she will soon be well. A Matt's Globemaster has reached the South Pole. supplies were recovered, and scientific problems, which had been replaced by survival problems, were tackled once again. The same stratolifter that airlifted part of Colonel Cullis's army battle group to Europe for the NATO exercises is unloading part of another army battle group at McCord Air Force Base near Fort Lewis, Washington. Troops from Fort Riley, Kansas, flown to Germany. Other troops returned to Fort Lewis, Washington. Operation Long Thrust. 
Four missions to four different parts of the globe have been completed on schedule. Hundreds of other Mats planes are still in the air over the ice fields of the Arctic and the Antarctic, over the vast expanses of the Pacific, the dense jungles of South America, the populated cities of Europe and the Far East, the sands of the African desert. Every minute of every day, Mats planes are in the air somewhere in the air lanes of the world on routine support missions for the armed forces. They are all ready to change course. All area command posts. This is ESTAF. All present missions are canceled. Implement recall and execute phase one. Repeat. Implement recall and execute phase one. In any spot in the world, one MATS plane can become 100 planes. 100 tons of cargo, 10,000 tons of cargo. 10,000 men, 100,000 men. MATS will support and supply these men wherever they go. In the hours and minutes it takes the fastest jet transports to fly the airways of the world. 